Thanks, everyone. Um, so, uh, this isn't my first BaselCon. Uh, I actually was in New York in 2017 for the very first BaselCon, just shortly after I joined Google. Uh, but just over a year ago, I took over responsibility for the Google Build teams that includes Bazel and Blaze. And so it's an it's a honor and a privilege to, uh, to be able to give you this keynote today. Um, Bazel continues to grow. We're, we're really, really happy to see this growth. Um, uh, one example of this is Slack, where people come together, interact, and help each other. So if you're not there already, take this as a call to action to sign up on the Slack. You can just uh, listen in and see what's happening, or you can participate. Um, similarly, the number of release downloads has uh, continued to go strong, um, and our GCS bucket is growing as well. Um, we know that some of these metrics are driven by certain types of automation, like CI, uh, but it's still uh, positive that these metrics are good. Um, the majority of users are still on Bazel 6, but there's a, there's, a, there's a significant fraction still on the older Bazel 5. And of course, we're looking forward to Bazel 7 soon. Uh, we're happy to see that companies are investing in Bazel and building out their business on top of it. And we'll hear from a couple of them during the next two days. Uh, let us know if you want to become a Bazel partner in the future. So if you, if you have a company and you think a partnership is the right route for you, we're very open to that discussion. Uh, now, there's a potentially uh, slightly contentious topic here, but it's worth airing publicly. So uh, one of the problems with all of these metrics is that they're proxy metrics. And so ideally, what we'd like to do is instrument the Bazel uh, infrastructure itself to be able to give us some more accurate metrics. But of course, we're not going to impose those on end users without uh, uh, agreement and compliance. So there's actually a birds of a feather um, session about this um, uh, at 10.45 today, if you want to join in that discussion. Um, but we think we're at the stage now where we would like to be able to get at access to more accurate information to make better decisions, especially with respect to deprecating older features, understanding how much they're actually in use makes a huge difference in terms of how one might plan for that sort of uh, growth. And Bazel is now quite a mature product in, ter in terms of its uh, how long it's been released. And so this sort of consideration starts to become important. Um, in addition, we'd like to collect information about Bazel crashes that would, al would allow us to figure out how to prioritize fixing bugs that were causing problems for end users. Um, so um, feel free to engage in that discussion. Uh, we, we regard it as a, a decision that we'll make with the community, and we look forward to engaging in that. Um, Bazel continues to be used at Google for important projects. And here we mean Bazel, not Blaze. Um, so, it's, so in other words, we have two types of use of the Bazel Blaze infrastructure inside Google. Most famously, our own Google 3 infrastructure using Blaze, which was the origin of Bazel. But we have a whole host of uh, folks uh, based on the uh, Garrett and Git on Borg ecosystem internally in Google, and many of those projects use Bazel. Um, Hayleaf is a very interesting example. Uh, uh, we're building Android Linux kernel and its modules with Bazel. Uh, the individual kernel modules, i.e. drivers, can be built in isolation and in, and in parallel. And in such a way, it's very reproducible. So that lowers the bar for developing kernel modules for Android using the driver development kit implemented using Starlark. Uh, partners seem to be happy with this build system, so that's the Android partners who also use it. In the long run, uh, the DDK unlocks easier kernel version upgrades and will be able to contribute to prolonged device lifetimes. So it's a win-win for the Android ecosystem. Uh, 
There's lots of other examples, uh, probably digging into the weeds a bit in some of our internal infrastructure. We have this thing called Pigweed, uh, an open source collection of embedded targeted libraries made by Google and used by Google hardware projects that have shipped in volume. And uh, they're transitioning to Bazel as the primary build tool. Uh, like a lot of us, they like the hermetic builds and the fact that Bazel is used much more widely than GN and they can share build rules with other projects. Uh, today, Chrome OS can build most packages using Bazel by wrapping the packages in legacy build scripts and can use those Bazel built-in artifacts to assemble OS images. So there's a major sort of migration happening of Chrome OS. Um, uh, and then Fitbit, um, has successfully has used Bazel as an intermediate step to migrate their uh, workflow um, to, into Google 3. So like they're, they're, they, they were an acquisition, they come in, they transfer to Bazel, and then they transfer to Google 3, which is they've done a lot of the heavy lifting already. Um, we need the community, and we're very happy that so many of you are engaged here for the next two days. Uh, the bandwidth of Google's Bazel team is not sufficient to fully support the whole ecosystem. Um, we need your support to help support the growth of the ecosystem. Uh, one example where we've already benefited from this support is the integration of Tinder's Bazel diff, cutting down on the number of test targets by 20% on average and 95% on docs only changes. Um, so, the sort of things that we really are looking to the community to step up to help own are rule sets, extensions, tools, and plugins. And uh, our current model is that we'll continue to be the primary drivers of the core. Um, Starlark rules. So rewriting the formerly native rules has been a long and tough project that we've been working on for a number of years, but we're getting close to the finish line. We can sort of see the finish line. Um, it allows us to have independent release cycles and ship improvements sooner, um, but it also importantly allows us to share ownership better with the community. So this year we made very good progress across all rule sets, and we expect to complete most of this transition in Q1 next year. Uh, you're probably aware that C++ and Java are harder than the other rules, and we have to continue their decoupling in 2024. Uh, we shared a new extensibility proposal early this year with the idea of having a base rule set that can then be extended in different ways. So the idea here is instead of needing to fork a rule set and maintain a completely parallel version, you can keep the common parts in a single place shared with more people. And the argument is that that will allow us to sort of manage fewer sets of rule sets over time. Um, and we hope that that uh, takes, gets traction and uh, that we get some take up there. Um, we envisage the extension mechanism laying the groundwork for more community rule ownership. And we've started the implementation of the proposal and plan to use existing native Java rules extension as a playground to pressure test the idea and uh, push the implementation forward this quarter. Uh, Evo will talk more about Bazel rules and the implications on ownership tomorrow at 10 a.m. And we're happy to see the surrounding community events around this uh, BaselCon itself. Um, starting with the community day yesterday. Hopefully some of you were able to join in with that. And uh, today and tomorrow evening, the community organized happy hours, our nice contribution to the overall conference. And we hope to see you there. And um, so looking back, as I mentioned, I was at the first uh, BaselCon in New York back in 2017. Um, and you could see this as an onward trajectory towards um, shared ownership of this flagship conference. In 2022, for the first time, office hours were hosted by non-Googlers, as they were the experts in the in these certain rule sets. In 2023, we've invited non-Googlers to join the program selection committee for BaselCon for the first time. So thanks to Bentley 
Fabian and Luis for your help. And in 2024, we want to go the next step and involve the community in all steps of planning. So let us know if you want to volunteer to be part of that planning process. We really appreciate it. Um, in terms of transparency, Google can sometimes be a very big black box and it's hard to understand what we're up to. Uh, but we've heard the feedback from the community that they want us to be more uh, transparent about what we're doing. And so uh, we're, we're trying to uh, address all of our internal processes and the way that we communicate. And we've recently published a general star larkification roadmap and timeline, as well as a timeline for other rules. Uh, we want to make sure to keep you up to date with quarterly community updates and more specific bug uh, blog updates, such as the recent posts about Basil Mod and Build Without Bytes. And we'll soon publish and regularly update a roadmap for Basil 8. Um, so I encourage you all to hold us to these promises and keep us honest. And uh, we will, uh, we're, we continue to be committed to uh, the Basil uh, project and to the community. Um, another way to get in touch with us and the other Basil developers and users are GitHub discussions. Uh, we enabled them earlier this year, and we saw that that seemed to be actually more engaging compared to what we'd seen on the deprecated Basil dev mailing list. Uh, we believe that they're a good place for having high-level design discussions, um, and we found voting options helpful for prioritization of open, open Basil mod migrations. So we encourage you to be active on this relatively new channel. Feel free to own it and add your own topics and chime in. It's, it's not just a communication channel for us. It's a, it's, it's a way of the community organizing itself in a semi-structured way using the GitHub-enabled uh, tooling. Um, earlier this year, we ran a survey to understand whether we should increase the frequency of our backwards compatible LTS long-term support releases. No real surprise, users generally prefer stability and fast delivery of features. We decided to keep the current de facto year-long release cycle for LTS, as it means fewer interruptions to coordinate Maisel, major Bazel and rule set updates. A longer major release cycle helps us to bundle more meaningful features into the release, making up for the incompatibilities that users have to go through. Um, our next major release, Basil 7, will be shipped soon. Uh, we've already created the first release candidate last week. Uh, please take a moment to test your own projects with the release candidate and report back to us if there's any problems. Uh, we want to highlight two major features. Build Without Bytes is a mode where you only download the necessary artifacts to your local machine, skipping over intermediate outputs. This obviously can speed up the build process uh, by our measurements, 40%, depending on network conditions. And while the mode has existed for years, we've actually revisited it, polished it, and we think it's ready for prime time usage. And it's going to be turned on by default in Basil 7. One of the bigger problems we fixed is gracefully handling the case where the remote cache evicted an artifact by build rewinding. The second thing we want to highlight is Bazel Mod. So it's Bazel's new way to manage third-party dependencies in a consistent way. For Bazel 7, we've matured Bazel Mod, migrated Bazel itself to use it, and added lock file and offline mode supports. We've now enabled it by default, but you can still use the legacy workspace-based system if you wish, but we encourage new projects to start out with Bazel Mod from scratch. Thanks for your attention. If you could hold your questions to the end of the next session, which in some senses will be a deep dive into some of these highlight items, uh, we'd appreciate it. But uh, suffice it to say, I hope to bump into and chat to many of you over the next two days. And you're more than welcome here to Munich and to Google and to BaselCon. Thank you. <laughs>